Hello friends, my name is Kair and I am an M.Tech Machine Design student from IIT Bombay. Now many of you have requested me to make a video on CAD modeling, which we usually do in different industrial packages like SOLIDWORKS, CREO, CATIA, NX and there are many others with some difference in their capabilities and functions. But first of all, what is CAD modeling? How you make a complicated geometry like this and actually it's very simple. But before I explain how to make it, let us first understand that whatever design software are there in the industry, they work on one of the three philosophies. First, parametric design, second, direct design, and third, synchronous technology. So what are these and how they have to do anything with the industrial design that we actually make? So let's understand them one by one. Well, first is parametric design. So just for your knowledge, Parametric design softwares were first introduced in 1980s. Before that, there were no CAD based modeling softwares available in the industries. Now as you all know that any mathematical shape you draw have an equation. If it's a line or a circle, parabola or a hyperbola, ellipse or maybe any other geometrical shape, they are all defined based on some mathematical formulas. So before 1980s, engineers have to use these mathematical expressions to make their geometries. But then a revolution came in the world of design, when first AutoCAD was launched in 1982 and then Pro Engineer in 1987 which is also known as Creo nowadays. So what they did is that they combined these complex mathematical formulas with graphical user interface so that you can now draw an ellipse just with a click and create a beam out of it without involving any of the mathematics. Now because of these flexibilities in design, more complicated and innovative designs can now be made very easily. Also one can make a CAD model and use it again and again. Not only this, you can make a design and transfer it to some another engineer and just by looking at your design history, a lot of information about your design intent can be recovered without even knowing or contacting you. For example, let me explain this with the example of flange design which is used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft. Now to make this design, I will use Creo software and I am sure many of you might have heard about this software too. So here I will make only one side of the flange to just show you an example. And here we will add features one by one to make a design. So first we make a circle. Then give it a thickness. Then draw another circle for making a hub. Then we will give it a thickness. Then draw a hole for mounting shaft. Now we will draw a hole for applying the bolt. Now we will pattern the hole along the circular periphery. Now we will round off the edges.
and then draw a rectangular slot for a keyway. And finally cut the slot to finish the design of one side of the flange. Thus we finish the design of one part of the flange by adding 10 features. So this particular design is the combination of 10 features in sequence. Here the parametric software remembers and stores the history in the model tree on the left hand side that which step is performed after which step and based on that fact if you send this file to some another engineer he can look your design history and tell that how you made this model and what is your design intent. Now design intent is itself a broad term and you can search on YouTube there is a very good video on design intent by Onshape and you will get a clear cut view on what actually design intent is. One advantage of parametric modeling can be seen when we design complicated geometries and I will show you it in our flange part example. Consider that you have designed this flange for a client who initially told you to design the flange for 50mm diameter of the shaft. So you keep the bore diameter 50mm and design the flange accordingly. And now he says that can you change this design for 100mm diameter of the shaft instead of 50mm diameter. So let's try doing it. When we change the diameter to 100mm other dimensions remain same. So now we have to update all of them one by one and it will not take much time here as there are only 10 features in our design but if there would be 1000 features then it would be very difficult to perform the changes in the design. But in case of parametric design softwares we have a nice solution to this problem. Here we have an option of relating the feature dimensions. For instance now I will show you the example where I have related the bore diameter to all the other parts of the model through relations option. And maybe I will explain it in a separate video that how to relate your features in CAD model. But for the sake of showing you the example here, let's just try it out. So I will change the diameter of hole from 50mm to 100mm. And then regenerate the design. And what you will notice is that the dimensions of all the features have updated to maintain the design intent and thus it is very powerful property of the parametric designs. Instead of even 100mm, let's say if I change it to 1000mm and then regenerate it and still it will remain same. Thus you can make design of any dimension and all the properties of your features will be retained. Now as parametric softwares are based on maths and as we all know that maths also follow certain constraints which will be also applied to our designs. And after some time I will show you an example just to reveal this disadvantage of parametric designs that the mathematical constraints which the parametric designs follows and which is its strength in case of design changes is now its weakness when we talk about the flexibility in the design. And by flexibility I mean whatever changes we want to make in our design. So what is the solution here? Well the answer is direct modeling. So we will again start our discussion by asking the question that what actually direct modeling is. Now before few years the use of direct modeling was limited to the field of animations only and it was not used in the field of engineering anywhere. But because parametric modeling was not flexible enough engineers found direct modeling as an option to add more creativity to their design. So just as parametric modeling is based on maths, direct modeling is based on pushing, pulling or twisting its geometry. So let me explain you this example in Creo Direct. So let's open Creo Direct first. It will take some time to open and also we can open the geometry created in Creo Parametric into the Creo Direct. So we will open the same geometry of flange design. And here we will try to modify the design. So here we only have to select the surface with a single click and you will see an arrow pointing outside and a circle around it. So as I told you the philosophy of direct design is that you can modify any feature of any part of the model just by pushing, pulling 
or twisting with the help of circular arrow regardless of the fact that which feature was created first. In fact, there is no design history just like parametric design. One important thing about direct modeling is that here when we make features one after the another, the software looks at it as a solid block when it's updated. And so it doesn't matter which part you create first or which part you create second because direct modeling software does not save any history at all regardless of how it is made. So the software here is programmed in such a way that its focus is only on applying the design changes that we have given to it without any constraint. So you can delete or update any feature in the model without hesitation and it will not affect the design. And as I already told you, for direct modeling software, it's just a solid block with a hub and a bunch of holes and you can push, pull or twist any geometry to change your design according to your wish. Thus direct modeling makes your design more flexible to the creative design changes that you want to apply to the model without carrying much of the mathematical constraints. There is one final feature that I want to show and actually it's a disadvantage of parametric modeling which I told you before and the advantage of direct modeling. So for that open a new file in Creo Parametric. Now let's make a long strip of 10mm width and 3mm thickness. And we will give its length of let's say 700 mm and click ok now let's make a 2 mm hole along the length of the strip so we will first take a circle and give it a diameter of 2 mm and extrude it to the selected surface and remove the material Now we will make large number of holes and soon you will know the purpose of doing all these things. So select pattern, select the reference from axis to direction and select the edge. Let the distance between the two holes be 4 mm and we will make 150 such holes. So let's check if it's filling the entire surface or not. So we will increase the holes to 175 and let's make it 174 and we will click OK. Now let's make a small cylindrical fin at one end of the strip of any dimension as is just for giving you guys an example. Now let's say that you change the thickness of the strip from 3mm to 3.2mm. And now as you have seen that even if we only made a design change in the height of the initial sketch, parametric software will update all the succeeding features to the current feature that we updated. And here there are the extrude features, those 174 holes and the fin. So the final point here is that in case of parametric software, if you want to make a design change in any intermediate part, 
it will update all the parts which are made after that feature and it will take large amount of time in case of large and complicated geometries to make design changes however in case of direct designs there is nothing like history of the geometry or intermediate parts here it is just a solid strip with a large number of holes also you can change diameter of any hole or maybe thickness of the strip and it will just update only one feature and that's it so it's not like that direct design only has advantages because when it comes to design changes unlike parametric design direct design does not have the ability to relate dimension and so the best way to get out of this situation is that you can use both parametric and direct modeling together now the third type of design is synchronous technology which is used in siemens software nx and solid edge and actually they claim that this synchronous technology contains both the advantages of parametric and direct design without having their disadvantages as of now i haven't tried either of the nx or solid edge so i will not be able to give you much information about synchronous technology but as far as my work is concerned i will tell you that i use creo parametric software as it was my first cad software which i learned and if you are a good designer you will always find a parametric design software better compared to direct design software with the exception of synchronous technology as i haven't used it and it's just my point of view so that's all for today i hope you understand what i explained in this lecture and in case of any doubt comment it now in the comment section below also please comment how you like this video and give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends now and in case of you forget to subscribe my channel you can subscribe it now for more such informative videos and at the end thanks for watching